Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Fine Scale Show for October 9, 2018 for YouTube Model Builders. Uh, tonight, we've got uh, Ralph and Johnny, of course, directing. Jo uh, added Lloyd to our repertoire as long as we can keep him and don't run him off. We've got Dave hanging out with us tonight. Dave Bilbert from Dave's Decals. I'm sure you guys remember him. And, uh, try to catch up with him and haven't seen him recently. So I'm glad to have him aboard. Uh, for the show, he's done a lot of really interesting kits that are in line and structures that are in line with what we're going to talk about. Uh, tonight, we're going to kick off a series that's going to go on for several months. Um, tonight, we're going to start talking about alternative building materials outside of the typical styrene and basswood MDF or, or wood structure kits, laser cut wood structure kits that we've worked with. We start talking about some of the benefits and alternatives, pitfalls, and some of the things that you need to know about the alternative media kits. So we'll break for one moment for station identification. Then we'll catch up with everybody and get going. I tend to do that. We can come back. And you didn't even take the opportunity to catch me off guard, but I wanted to add one more thing to, to what we're talking about. So next month, we're going to start a series. We're going to work on it for several months, starting with HydroCal structures. Uh, we'll work on a downtown deco kit, but there's a whole lot of other HydroCal kits uh, that have been on the market for a lot of years. I mean, it's been a common medium in the hobby, but it, much like wood for uh, for styrene structure builders, uh, often has a, a, a bit of a... a fear it's starting to work with that alternative media to styrene so you've, it, if you use the right uh, adhesives and, and paints and properties that of the material use the properties of the material to your advantage hydrocal or in tonight's case we're going to work with resin um, these mediums have distinct benefits and advantages and there's structures available in these different mediums that that are not available in other things um, as an example uh, the hydrocal or uh, resin so we can start talking about that particular detail, is uh, a common material used in fine scale uh, rolling stock kits. Uh, been around for a long time. Panero, Carbolico, uh, Sunset, for, or, yeah, Sunset made a bunch for years. There's a bunch of, uh, of structure or uh, rolling stock manufacturers that have released spectacular kits uh, in resin. And most of the highly, highly detailed um, and resin, uh, especially the rolling stock arena, has a lot of the similar properties to uh, to brass uh, locomotives, where you can find brass locomotives at very low run numbers, so they can build specific prototypes that would not sell at a volume that would justify all of the build out it would take to to build out that SD40 that they could sell at a volume enough to to, to make those molds, where you can make resin molds quite quite inexpensively. The disadvantage to resin is they must be in small molds because the resin, the, the molds don't hold up as well. Uh, there's also harder properties to work with them 
compared to re uh, injection molding like you would with polystyrene. Uh, resin does, does have some distinct uh, characteristics in that you can't use a solvent on it. Um, so what we call uh, a, a polystyrene adhesive, quote unquote adhesive, is a solvent. You're welding the plastic. You're, you're breaking down that material, softening that material, and allowing it to make its own chemical bond. And then the solvent goes away, allowing that material to have structurally made a connection with itself, using itself as its adhesive. With wood, naturally, you could use any of the, the PVA glues, whether that's a, a wood glue, which is the same as white glue, it's PVA glue, except that it's more water, that it is water resistant, um, not, not completely water, you know, protected or water, it's just resistant to water with wood glue. So um, I really like using a tacky glue with, with wood, wood structures, but it is uh, damageable with, with water. With resin rolling stock kits, me and Dave were just talking about this uh, prior to the show too. With rolling stock kits or quite small kits, I use super glue. I don't, that, that works fine, especially with, with rolling stock kits um, where you don't have to worry so much about the appearance of the inside of it so that you can put a bead of it like you would caulk around a, a bathtub. You can put a bead of super glue in there so it has some structural rigidity. Um, although for larger kits, I, I prefer epoxy. We're going to talk about some of the, the considerations for working with epoxy tonight. This is going to be a common um, adhesive that we're going to use in HydroCal. So, what do you guys think about those those characteristics? You guys have any other experience with other adhesives, or is epoxy to go to? Well, the only caveat that I have about using PVA glue on wood kits is you make sure that you've done all your staining or painting before you use the PVA glue because once that's on there, the stain will not penetrate it. No question. So it doesn't matter what kind of glue you use. You want to stain and, and paint everything beforehand. And a lot of the fight scale guys, regardless of, of medium, tend to, and this is kind of a discussion even that applies to the styrene kits as well. Uh, there's a discussion as to paint before or paint after. That's, that's the consideration. I, I am a, paint in the middle because I can't, I, I have to be different than everybody else, maybe, but I tend to paint about being process on polystyrene kits. I will build the super assembly and then paint it so that I get some of the benefits of the acrylic paint as a gap filler almost. So mm -hmm. I like to paint after I've built the super assembly. Um, I'd say the same thing, same way with resin, I'm going to paint that after. With wood, I agree. Staining, absolutely. You can you stain the material. You can paint after because paint will adhere to to it. Well, it it you covers it. Rip it off. It it covers it. The paint covers it. But if, yeah. if you're painting with stains, you have to be careful. No question. The glue will change the properties of the wood, and you can't use it. Um, it just won't penetrate at the glue point. That's right. Lose the absorption. With it. Um, and super glue is fine. Dave, yeah, go ahead. But you talk about hydrocan. How long had it from Thomas York? It was uh, made in 1979. I've got another one sitting over there. I'm getting ready to start on for a gentleman out there. And they've never been opened. I've got a few. I've got. I think I've got one Thomas York, or maybe one or two of them. But I, I bought them somewhat recently, but off of eBay. There's a tremendous number of hydrocal kits from other manufacturers. Uh, Delta Deco has become kind of famous in the last few years for hydrocal being kind of the name. But hydrocal has been a common medium for decades in the hobby, and a spectacular medium. I mean, oh, I like Thomas York is a really good kit. In addition to downtown Deco. That those those predate. Rand yeah. yeah. His last name's Pepper Rock, right? Yeah. Randy right. Pepper Rock. R O C K. Yeah. No, no Pepper or Pep Rock. Oh, okay. No, we are. I've been talking to Randy. I hope to get him on uh, next month for you guys to as a discussion to to you know why he chose hydrocal as a media for his kids etc i look yeah, forward but, uh, to talking to randy and try to work that out for everybody um 
I think HydroCow is the absolute talk, best media for brand. So I talked to him yesterday about uh, doing a uh, 124 or one eight, 122 to, to accommodate one eight garage wall for people with cars. All right. It'd be interesting. So you could do so many things in, in hydrocal and resin that you could that would be hard to do in, in styrene because of the mold work it takes to set up for for styrene. And we've learned to work with the characteristics of styrene. I mean the DPM or, or uh Woodland Sadix now uh structures have had their trade-offs and you just have to work with some of those that are they're part of the injection process. Uh, where they have to be drafted uh, at an angle to to be removed. That's we know those characteristics, but there's different distinct characteristics with resin. So, um, and I'm going to work with some of those. So for wood, resin is absolutely a must to wash it. There's a release agent that's in it. I've already washed the walls that I'm going to work with tonight. Uh, resin also used to be quite common. The kits that have now become uh, that were DPM for a large number of years. Most of us in the last 30 years, 20 years. Uh, modeling uh, have used DPM kits they have, that have now become with the kits. Prior to that, the creator of the DPM uh, series had the Magnuson uh, structure kits. This is a Magnuson kit, and there's a lot of Magnuson kits still available on eBay and other places, and they're spectacular. And my personal opinion, and this is all up for interpretation, my personal opinion is I think resin makes a better brick detail than styrene. It is less rounded. The problem I have with styrene, there's a lot of problems I have with styrene for anything other than metal. Uh, if you're modeling steel, building bridges with, styrene is a spectacular medium for that. Brass is still probably better, but styrene is so much easier to work with, it's worth the trade-off of pitfalls. Um, resin, on the other hand, has a spectacular sharpness of detail. Can't show it on the cameras that we had to present their shows with, but it's a really sharp edge. That's that's a Magnuson uh, resin kit. Right there. Hasn't been painted yet, but. Yep. And it's <laughs> if if I didn't know if I didn't know better, I would say it's a DPM kit. So it's basically yep. the same molds. That is, that is a DPM. I can I can. Yep. They did. They just yeah, went mean, uh, the same kits that Magnus had had with DPM. Um, uh, they started doing that. They kept the same molds. They did the same process. They were just able to do a large enough volume then to justify producing them in polystyrene or in styrene, which is easier for most people to work with than resin. Yep. Except yep. for if you buy the O scale kits. If you buy the Dow Woodland Cedix and DPM, previously DPM O scale 148 uh, structure kits, they were still in resin. They maintained those in resin, probably because of the lower production volumes, possibly. Mm -hmm. So I prefer working, I prefer working with resin, or, or I'm sorry, with, well, with resin, epoxy is a resin, epoxy resin. I prefer working with epoxy uh, personally. I would use epoxy on rolling stock kits, especially on body assemblies. Uh, a lot of these resin kits that I have are single body uh, kits. I do have a few what's called flat pack kits where you do have to assemble the walls to it. But there's just not enough uh, there's just not enough uh, meat to the side of that kit to, to get epoxy into the side of it. So you still have to be that in the inside wall on say a resin boxcar kit that is a flat pack. Um, I massively prefer the single body uh, kits uh, with resin rolling stock kits. They do tend to twist. One of the trade-offs of resin is it has a tendency to warp, much worse than polished styrene. It, it does have a tendency to warp. You do have to correct for that. The easiest way to do it is heat it up. Uh, that's not throw it in the oven at 350 for a half hour. Put the cookies in the oven and throw this stuff in some hot water. Um, it'll take it fairly hot, but generally, if your hot water heater started up pretty good and you've got a really hot tap water, that's generally genuinely, uh, generally adequate enough. If not, no kit for 20 seconds, 10 seconds or something. You don't want to put it in boiling water. It will damage it or reduce the de de uh, detail. You need to wash this stuff anyway. I wash it in particularly hot water. Lay it on glass, something that, or a perfectly straight surface that you have. Glass is spectacular for anything that you need as a perfectly flat structure. 
Uh, I tend to build a lot of things on glass because it gives you such a level surface, uh, assuredly level surface to work on. I'm going to work on that tonight. Most, uh, most of the modelers that, that do fine scale work, work on a piece of glass. Everybody that I know uses a piece of glass. Yeah, there's so many benefits to it, uh, to working on a piece of glass. I mean, dumping out a little bit of uh, paint on it to do some kind of, uh, you know, small detail work. Scrape it up yep. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, however, I, I like to dilute a thin epoxy a bit when I'm working with, with structures, especially when you have a, a structure wall that's somewhat thin. It's just easier to apply. There, there's several ways to dilute uh, resins, epoxy adhesive resins, or otherwise, if you're making a river and using a, a resin, it's not that dissimilar from, uh, from an epoxy resin adhesive. Although a resin that you would get to make a river with will be, um, will be much more clear, whereas an adhesive may have more of a yellow tendency, especially uh, immediately right away while the resins we use for streams and stuff some of them have a tendency to yellow over the years um, also epoxy has a shelf life uh, so does super glue super glue it, by the way uh, interesting uh, characteristic that's worth reading the wikipedia article for but i'm not not going to read it to you on here but uh, a super glue is a form of, of an epoxy it was effectively developed uh, with guys working with uh, epoxy combinations and it, it follows the same properties it's still an acrylic resin base glue or an acrylic base glue uh, just like an epoxy resin is but there are a lot of different types of resins polyester resins etc um, so epoxy resin there's a couple ways to thin this stuff to make it easier to work with the best way is to is to heat it up just just work with it hot that's a little harder to work with and to keep it warm while working with it. I have done it uh, uh, in a uh, uh, a little heat pot, like you would put uh, uh, hot glue, like a little heat pot that I've tried working with when I make the trees. And uh, I've tried doing it that way, but it gets the epoxy awful hot, really hard to work with. Um, but you can also dilute this stuff with acetone or MEK. Uh, I'd recommend staying away from MEK in this purpose. Uh, <laughs> while I've recommended MEK for styrene, it's it's fine if you're never going to touch MBK, but MBK is, is so toxic that I don't use it unless I have to. So I use acetone. I'm going to use acetone tonight. Check straight, cheap, buy it in big bottles. Uh, but the disadvantage to acetone is, however much acetone you add, it's going to it's going to reduce the strength by roughly that amount. So we're going to so we're going to add a fairly small amount of acetone, but it takes very little. Um, I do about the same thing with contact cement when I dilute in. It's 5% of the mix, uh, or in this case, a few drops. You can use a pipette to pull the stuff out and to control it, but acetone eats plastic. Not as quickly as MEK or methyl ethyl ketones or methyl ethyls of any of the varieties. That's plastic. Probably get one use out of it, but these things are cheap as chips, as the Brits say. So pretty cheap, anyway. Um, so we'll put a little bit, I'm going to use a little bit of acetone to dilute this stuff. A uh, few drops, because we're going to work with a pretty small amount of epoxy tonight anyway. So, and you can do the same thing if you're doing an epoxy. Uh, if you're doing a river uh, or water feature on your layout, you can dilute it the same way. There's worse consequences on a, uh, on a water feature of your layout with adding acetone, reducing the strength. Uh, in my opinion, it's not worth it. So when I did the the river section that I've done on my layout so far, and when I do the the future water <laughs> features of my layout, I do the same thing. I will heat this stuff up. I'll throw it in a in, in some hot water and let it get warm, let it soften up before I start working with it uh, as a water feature. Another advantage is that epoxy ha ha has a a chemical reaction process, and it's a thermal reaction. There's a there's a heat exchange in this process a bit. That's why when you do a water feature of your layout and use uh, either wood and scenics new, new scenery products, new water uh, feature products, the two-part part products, or uh, magic water or Envirotex, there is a heat release there. Uh, the reason we have to take special considerations when we're working on top of styrofoam layouts is because there is a heat exchange in that process. Uh, however, with as with most thermal activated or, or heat exchanged uh, chemical reactions, they actually benefit 
from staying warmer longer. So when I cured the river section of my layout, and actually the best way to figure out about how to use epoxy is to look at the watch some of the YouTube videos on the cabinet guys that do countertops, especially on YouTube. They use a a, a blowtorch. They keep the resin quite liquid for some period of time as it's setting up and activating. Uh, in my case, on my water feature of the layout, uh, I used a, a professional hot air gun. Uh, you could use a hair dryer, but it doesn't get very hot. And I kept that resin fairly hot for a reasonable period of time. That also lets you escape uh, carbon dioxide bubbles out of it. The way they tell you to blow on the stuff, that, that drives me crazy. I, I'm not doing that. So I used the, the hot air gun. It keeps the resin hot longer. It will be a harder surface when complete if you keep it hot. So let's change cameras. So Dave, you do a bunch of kits for other people, right? And that yep. big part of what you do. I've seen a lot of those are resin kits, uh, or a lot of those are hydrocal kits, right? A lot of hydrocal kits and most mostly scrap. There's some real nice work. We'll by the end of the show, we'll make sure we point some people towards your website. Of course, you've got most anybody who's familiar with uh, with you, especially the guys that have watched YouTube model builders for a while, will be familiar with your decals that, that you provide. Uh, your local Just boys go to make sure we got you. Yes, sir. Really spectacular stuff. I know you gave away a bunch to, to people. I know a lot of people in the community have bought them from you. They're pretty spectacular. Uh, and the flexibility that you have with you to, to reach and get some custom stuff. So, yeah, I do a lot of. I've got, I've got a whole board full of custom. Been looking at some emails here tonight on some custom stuff people people are wanting me to do. Uh, it's, we're starting to come inside and get back into the hobby a little bit from the summer winds down and. And winter starts up. Getting all scientific over there. <laughs> but you don't have to measure it per se. You just add a few drops if you're working with it. I mixed up a little bit more so I can make sure we don't have to work with this again. This did, is just did, five did, you know, did you notice what he did? He said now acetone is kind of dangerous, so be careful with it. So with the last few drops he had in the pipette, he just went and dropped it on the floor, squeezed it on the floor. Uh, it's <laughs> Acetone, now, MEK is, is absolutely, uh, I, I take precautions with MEK. Uh, just like we talked about when we talked about some chemistry, I think, last show, um, I use nitrite gloves when I work with MEK. Um, I am not, I won't take that risk with MEK. It's it's quite toxic. I'm Acetone, a daredevil with a lot of MEK. I use it. I prefer it. I mean, it's my absolute favorite plastics adhesive, but I, I don't touch it with my hands. And I, I don't let it absorb into the skin or get on my skin if I can prevent, if I can help it. I try to not, uh, when I'm uh, decanting it into a smaller container to work with it, um, I, I, you know, I make sure I don't breathe over it. Uh, you know, you don't, you just don't want that stuff into you. There's too much risk. Um, also, a mistake a lot of people make with with resins of any kind is the mixture, and you you'll see this with the guy with, when you're doing the, with water features with the Biotex. They'll tell you to mix for a, for several several minutes. Um, that's just about the same thing with with epoxy. It's essentially the same material, so you do want a pretty solid mixture. You want to make sure those that the hardener and the actual the actual resin itself have have are mixed at a pretty similar rate. You can also they'll tell you to mix this stuff in in equal parts. There's some advantages at times to adding more or less harder depending on the results you want. If you wanted a somewhat rubbery contacts, um, um, like a contact adhesive type effect, you can use quite a bit less harder and it will remain a bit rubbery for a pretty good long time. It'll eventually get brittle, but it sure takes, I mean, it'll take years to harden well, up. That water feature that I did, this uh, the mixture was uh, 
two parts resin to one part uh, hardener. And that was the new Woodland Scenics Deep Pour. And I really liked it. it. It was nice and firm or hard, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I also used as a sample um, magic water that I had left over. I really like magic water. Magic water's nice, but I found that the stuff it it it's it doesn't get really really hard like the um, Woodland Scenics or Envirotech or or anything like that. I think I mean, you here, can use more hardware with it. Uh, this I this it more harder. Here's a sample of the magic water. This has been poured now, probably three weeks old. It's still flexible. Wow. Wow. Like a lot flexible. Yeah. And yet, and now I can't find the other one. Uh, That's crazy. The, the Woodland Scenics one is rock hard. That's surprising. Now, I've seen uh, in Virotex, the, the problem with Virotex, if you don't do it right, it'll never get hard. It'll be... You know, it will be tacky. That's a common experience people have. And part of the fear that people have of working with Envirotex is that, that it'll end up being some kind of goop that they have to dip out a bunch of scenery to correct for. But you could use more harder in it. Uh, I, I have an opinion about why Woodland Scenics is the two-to-one mixture, but, but we'll, we'll stay clear of that. But uh, because it, it does shrink a bit, so... Uh, like more than I expected. I, I poured nearly a half inch and I got less than three eighths inch of water. That also explains part of the uh, wicking that happens into your surface because it actually shrinks as it as it bonds. Uh, one of the advantages to using more hardener in resin, especially for water features, is that it'll harden a lot faster. Um, mm -hmm. I've poured it a lot of people in our community and I will draw attention to this to anybody watching as well that hasn't heard me say this. Lex Parker, one of my favorite modelers, and uh, uh, Ralph went to go see his layout not too long ago, and he had to text me at the time to rub this in, of course, but he went over to visit. But, uh, Isn't that what I'm supposed to do? Uh, absolutely. I'm glad you did, but his layout is, is superb. I mean, I haven't seen it in person. Let Ralph speak to that, but it's, it's spectacular. His work's spectacular. He has done the absolute best falling water feature or waterfall that I've ever seen done on a layout bar done. And it's done entirely with resin instead of some latex or acrylic medium uh, over a, uh, a filter material, a really fine angel hair style filter material, filter floss, whatever. It's spectacular. Uh, something else I've already done to these, by the way, that draw, that, that's a good trick. This is my, my old bobber man trick he talked about, everybody does. There's nothing like a piece of sandpaper glued to, to a board. That's a must have. So I, I've already taken it squared up all the walls. This is not nearly as necessary as with DPM kits, where they have a slight draft angle. A DPM kit will have a a draft angle of sub of sub dimension there, so that these can be removed from the mold uh, yep. easier. Resin doesn't have that tendency because the mold is removable. It's a, it's a flexible mold, so it can be ripped away from it. It doesn't have that as much, but you still want to square these up because you want you don't want to have to fix. A, a gap in these seams. Also, most of these resin kits, this same thing as a DPM kit, so it will have a certain uh, way that it, that it goes together. In this case, the detail for this wall, is a, uh, for the front wall, uh, overlaps, because on this outside corner, this wall will come in and from behind. The back wall, on the other hand, will be inset behind, between these two walls. So yep, take a yep. look at the detail that's on the sides. Don't miss that. It's good stuff. But you do want to square those off because you want that to be a pretty tight seam between these parts. That's that's not impossible to fix, but pretty hard. Uh, well, most of us do anyways. Put a, uh, you know, put some piping or put electrical stuff in those places to hide that better anyway. But it, and it, in the cases where the brick overlaps, I, I try. Of course, I'm a little persnickety, but I will try to get those those lines to be something approximating correct. But if the if it's a good kit and you're using glass and you get a you know a good flat edge, they should line up pretty close anyway. So um, you're also pretty square. I've been meaning to buy for a long time one of those magnetic jobbies, but 
I haven't done it yet. What you need, what you need is a one, two, three block. Yeah, I thought about those a bunch too for a while. I kept or, looking at or, that, that or tape. The or the ninety degree setup blocks that you can actually. I've got mine so that I have magnets, and the magnets are strong enough they'll hold right through the plastic. Yeah, I really do want one of those magnets, and I'm really interested in. What's the rest? I'm really interested in those uh, those tables that, or the pans rather. It's like a like a bacon pan, magnetically, you know, like a bacon pan with an edge on it. That they the magnets, micro bar has them. Uh, yep. Those are quite interesting. I thought if, about you're, those if you're if you're international, as I found, they will not ship that pan. I ordered it three times, and without any explanation, they did would not ship it. Uh, so I finally called them and asked them what's what's the deal, and they said we cannot send it air freight. Really? Because of the magnets. So I said, well, send it ground freight. It's a it's a no brainer. Well, no, we can't do that either. So the next time I ended up crossing the border, I went and got one. That's amazing to me. Because of it being magnets. Yep. Yep. All right, can I interrupt? Please. There we go. I see you. <laughs> yep. Lego. Yes, sir. Can't go wrong with Lego. Why can't I use Legos? What's wrong with I like Legos are spectacular. They're perfectly square. Your kids are grown up. Okay. So it's weird. Well, yeah, okay. I'm not converting to being a Lego ball. I might use some Legos to square one up and got busy and walked off and came back and I glued the Legos to, <laughs> to the building. Are they are they attacked? Uh, is a Lego attacked by a styrene? Yes, I saw, sir. I, saw, but I would have thought so. Yeah. Actually, once you once you put some together, it's a good idea to uh, glue them together because then it's then it's a. a a squaring fixture and you don't have to worry about it falling apart you can use your elastic bands the whole bit that makes sense let's try this again since I didn't pay attention to my switcher I turned my microphone off Anyway, let everybody know I was doing the Imagine That Laser Art Olympia tool and die building. And these are the Legos that I've uh, built up for the different wall sections so I can clamp them while they're glued to get them square. But I keep these loose so that uh, I can change the shapes for whatever I'm building. Be able to clamp it up. I also have uh, one, two, three blocks, and uh, I've got the angle block like Ralph was showing. Mine's not as big as his, but uh, he's a bigger man than me anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I've got several different things to use. 
and I do have the magnet board too. Box. I do have a magnet board that I use. Uh, do you have one of those, like the MicroMark board? Uh, it's not like the MicroMark. Mine's flat, but I've got a bunch of uh, magnets for it. What they call it? They're uh, light magnet, light magnets that are not super strong, and then they're regular magnets that are strong. But I think they I might prefer a flat surface. That little lip around the edge seems like it would be would get in my way, but. It's no, not that that little lip around the edge is for square. Yeah, it's not right. actually ninety degrees. Yeah, it's to square the stuff up, and they intentionally leave the corners out of it too, so your parts can overlap right there. Yeah, I mean they did that part, but I don't know. I've thought about buying one of those boards for a long time. Just hadn't decided to do it, but yeah. All right. I'm turning my mic back off. Y'all can continue with your show now. <laughs> well, I think the blue's set up on the too quick anyway, so five minute epoxy. You you do have a time limit working with it. Of course super glue's kind of the same situation, but I'm surprised you didn't well, use ten, ten minutes. Yeah, I probably should have. Well you could slow it down too, but I I put the same an equal about a harder in it, so I I would put a little bit on top of this. <clears throat> Actually, one of the best tricks for doing uh, that I work for doing epoxy is these uh, credit are, are cards. Most clean, honestly, I save these hotel cards uh, that you're supposed to give back. I think uh, I, I save these things, and uh, I usually put super glue on or epoxy, or uh, they're super handy. I, I cut little squares out of that's what I use to insulate between rails, too. A good well, I hate I hate to admit I hate to admit this, but if you go to like a lot of fast food restaurants, they're right there for the taking. What's that? You broke up for just a moment. What is it? A fast food restaurant that's so handy? The they're a credit card. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. I saved the room cards and the credit cards for uh, filling in the gaps in my rails when I, when I uh, gapped the rail. The credit card's the perfect size is the Dremel, Dremel cutter. That's right. That's that's what I use for rail gaps too. It also adheres, and I I, I started using acetate, uh, just like what, <laughs> what, what what I don't use in, in windows and structures anymore since I since I fell in love with using uh, real glass for it, either the Sierra Model Works glass or the uh, or the co uh, cover slides, uh, microscope cover slides. Um, but I save that acetate and I use the acetate for. Uh, for rail gaps, but it's really hard to adhere that stuff in. It is once you do adhere it in, it's really easy to cut away and to clean up for with acetate. And even if you do leave a little bit, it's clear, so it hides pretty well. But I, most of mine are done with with these room keys. You don't need a lot anyway, but it is a little weaker with the acetate, so. But it is easier to spray and to make sure you don't get any chunks in it that will cause, or any thicker spots that will cause you problems, or mess with you getting a good square, a good square fit. And I do the same thing with styrene structures as I do with resin structures. I build an assembly of two walls and then an assembly of two more walls, make sure they're both square, that everything should be made up once the glue sets up. Another good thing, well, with most of the glues that I work with, short of wood glue, the only glue that I have to, that takes me a bit of time is when I do a wood structure. I, I prefer the wood glue, even though the trade-off is it's not fast. But with five-minute epoxy, it sets up quite quickly. With the NEK, it's super fast.
fast. I found I found using the uh, canopy glue when yes, I'm sir. doing wood structures sets up faster than regular PVA. Uh, yep, yeah, I'd imagine it would. I really like canopy glue for a lot of things too, uh, especially if you're working on top of pre-painted walls. If you've done like a lot of fine scale guys do, and you've built up your walls, put all the detail on it, I mean, guttering on it, windows in it, everything. Uh, if you did, if a little canopy glue did squeeze out on you somewhere, it, it dries virtually completely clear. Worst case scenario, it would be slightly shiny. And you'd have, you know, if you don't go. I like the canopy glue quite well. Canopy glue is not as strong as a wood glue is. But it, stay, it stays a little bit flexible is what is what it does. I, I, I like it for building the fine scale kits because it gives me some lee, some leeway. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. And for putting windows in, and, and not just the, the glass, I mean, that's a no-brainer. I definitely use the canopy glue for set, putting all my glass in. But even setting the windows into the structure, I, do, I use canopy glue there. I use it for most of the details. The only place where I'd still use wood glue is in the actual superstructure or building the square structure of the walls because I do want it to be reasonably rigid. That's what I use on all my windows is canopy glue. That same one you've got formula 500 or whatever it is. 560, yeah. Is. is there another one? I think all of us use that same version, that same brand to make it canopy glue. Is there another one? Oh, Tester, tester, okay. They make a clear window glue. Yeah. That works off. Like they're really old, like the old wavy glass. I use that Elaine's glue, and I just take a toothpick and smear it all over the the acetate over the glass. or the plastic. Yeah. Say again. You smear it all over your the the, the clear glass that's supposed to go in. Just to give it that old look? And just to give it that, that old wavy, wavy glass look? Yeah. So, because a lot of, uh, for people, and, they, and it, it helps diffuse it so you don't have to worry about detailing inside as much. Right. Dual coat's pretty good for that, too. And things like when you're lighting stuff. If you don't want to be able to see inside of it, you put a pretty good coat of dull coat on it, too. It'll also diffuse it. Uh, one of the advantages of working with real glass is that you can see inside and see all the detail real well if it's real glass. And it also has a really nice <laughs> reflective property. But if you don't want to be able to see it. I don't do a lot of detailing on the inside since I build for other people. They just want maybe a little bit in the front. But for the most part, they just want the building. I'm a big fan of interior detail. We're going to do a show entirely on that here recently. Uh, Lloyd's been doing such spectacular interior detail work. I mean, his is about as good as anybody's I've seen. His interior work is spectacular. Thank you. But only what only whatever the the person I'm building the building for wants. But most people just don't don't want any. No, I can understand that. And it depends on the case. I think modeling is a, is a very conditional, uh, it, it is a very conditional thing. You know, I, I would build structures differently. Um, I would do different things with trees that I currently do if it were not for the characteristics of my layout. Where my layout's at eye level, quite narrow, we're looking up into the seed, uh, or, or into the seed, or up into the seed in a lot of cases. Um, so in, in my case, I just can't get away without putting some interior detail, at least what's seeable from the, you know, through the window, through the door. Of course, that's that's all I do is that. But well, I got one over here. I just got worked on. I just put a couple of tables in the front that you could see, because as opposed to being at eye level. I don't know. I've never seen his layout. It's has he been built? Let's see if I can find a building.
This this wall is a five minutes, ten minutes. This is, this is a stuff. scratch. You can see just put a couple of just to give it a little bit of something to look at. Yeah, really, you really just need a hint of something in there. It doesn't need to be, you know, it doesn't need a lot. It, it's not necessarily. No. Uh, do you want me? To, nice do you want me to show you some, Andy? Please, I, it's yeah, got uh, it's right there in front. Okay, I'll show you just a few. This is my favorite. It's called uh, LCBO. It's a liquor commission, and you could see. Well, I, the lights are not on yet, but you can see the the inside. Uh, well, anyway, there's racks of um, liquors, and right beside it, it's called uh, OLG, which is Ontario uh, Gaming Commission. Gaming, yeah, yeah, and you'll you would be able to see that there's a slot machine where the guy is standing behind the drapes. And my barber shop. Um, well, there's three barber chairs. There's a table with magazines on it. Um, hey, don't blow over those, uh, uh, those barber chairs. Tell them how long you took to build those and then, and then go back to giving me a hard time for spending a lot of time on something. I <laughs> Tell them how long that took you. Well, uh, hold on. I'll just try to take it out. So that way you could have a better look at it. Yeah, those barber chairs took me, uh, one of them took me three hours just to get started. It's scratch built, measures an eighth of an inch by two eighths or a quarter inch. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I build those scratch and even the, I don't know if you can see inside, uh, the wall has frames and the pictures are all, <laughs> they're all from my layout. <laughs> there's, there's even a fan on the ceiling. So everything was scratch built. I mean, if you don't have the patience for it, sure, you could buy those chairs. I think they're, Almost Actually, like you can oh. buy photo. You can buy photographs, and and I've seen guys put them in from corner to corner of the front. You just sort of squeeze it together, and 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 put it in, and it, it's almost a three D photograph. I like those. Especially You're right, Ralph. You put a little yeah. detail in front of them, a little three dimensional detail in the front of the structure, in the front small portion of the structure, and then put a photo in the back. I'm good. That's good. Because this one here, the Pet Shop Boys, which is a pet shop, <laughs> um, you could, s I don't know if you can see inside, there's a dog. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a picture that goes from corner to corner, the front corner to the other front corner. And basically what you see is there's a dog, there's a counter, and a bunch of doggy treats, I guess. So that was one inside. Um, I don't know. If, no, I can't take that one out. Would you? Would you do for drapes up top? The draw. Uh, the drapes are from IKEA store. <laughs> uh, basically, I did a search on the internet and found some drapes and photographs. Yeah, they're just pictures of drapes. And what you got to do is if you're uh, at ease with uh, Photoshop, yeah, you, you can shrink it to the size. Like I knew how much the window was. Like I think it was uh, an inch and a quarter. So basically I shrink um, the drapes for to fit the window. But what's important is when you bring in Photoshop a picture, Usually it's 72 pixels. Well, you got to change that to 300 or 500 so that Maybe when you uh, shrink it, right? Yeah, DPI. DPI, okay. Uh, so you, by increasing the number, you will see the details of whatever picture you, you've got. Right. Like, for example, this one here. 
the gold finger jewelry. Well, there was no way I was going to do any 3D jewelry. So, <laughs> um, yeah. so the windows, the windows have pictures of an inside, um, you know, like close to the window, they usually put in like a display. Yep. So the two side windows have displays, but through the door, you'll be able to see a 3D counter with uh, a figure inside. Right. To, to mix it up. And, and then you got a Tim Hortons donuts. Of course, that I'm waiting for. That I wasn't going to do um, 3D stuff. But if you look at my, oh, I like this one. It's called ICU. <laughs> it's a uh, optometrist, what do you call it? Uh, Optomo optometrist and ophthalmologist. And downstairs, it's, uh, you'll see that there's a, a display of glasses. So you've got a display on either side with a counter. And in the middle, there's a counter with a lady in the back um, serving the people. So yeah, doing the inside is, I mean, if your buildings are, what, uh, 24 inches away, I don't think it's that important. But mine are about 10 inches away from uh, the edge. So people will be able to see inside. Well, there's an easy way to to shrink things down if you're not ha if you're not experienced with Photoshop. Just about everybody has, unless they have a a, a Mac or an Apple unit, uh, has Microsoft Word. And in Microsoft Word, if you import a photograph, you can. Uh, when you click on that photograph once, you get these four little dots on the corners, and you can literally shrink it to what you want and put rulers up on the page to get it the exact dimension you want, and then print it out. And then the only thing you have to do is in your printing set, printer settings, when you go print that, just make sure it prints full size and it's not scale too thin. Otherwise, it'll fill your whole page. All right. Yeah, that's all set up. Five minutes. So, anyway, there's a lot of resin kits on the market. They're pretty straightforward to work with. We put that together in a couple minutes, and it's as solid as, you know, as if you were working with plastic adhesive. It's a pretty heavy, pretty thick material. Uh, resin is often a fairly thick structure, fairly thick material, especially if you're going to get into some of the resin uh, rolling stock kits. I, I've got quite a few of these. If I had enough time, uh, you know, if I was immortal or, or find a vampire or something to, to bite me, that I, my whole layout would be resin rolling stock kits. I think they're, I think they're superb. Uh, but until I find the the, the key to immortality, um, I have to take some trade offs. Andy taking trade-offs. Hmm. There's there's compromises. Uh, everybody that's talked to me much has heard me say model railroading is a choose your own it, building a layout, not not just being a modeler in general. But if you're building a layout, it's a choose your own adventure. It's like a choose your own adventure book. In that building a layout is a choose your own compromise. There will be a compromise. Find the things you care the most about. In my case, that's track and trees. I, I think track. I think track really matters, especially if it's right up in front of you. And uh, I really love all the detail parts and stuff. They're fascinating. A turnout with all the parts in it, like, should be there. All the hook tie plates and, um, you know, the braces that go uh, adjacent the points on the stock rail. That, that stuff's beautiful. Um, I mean, it really looks like a fine machine. My problem with, with a lot of the commercial turnouts or any of the other turnouts we use, there's virtually, there's very little detail on them. They may be tie plates and some spike detail, oversized or otherwise, but there's not as much there. And track work, especially when it's really front and center, in my case, it's right in LA when it's right in front of you, having all the detail parts and all the time plates is really worth it to me. The modeling Appalachia trees is necessary. So I have to make the sacrifice of using structure kits, resin, hydrocal, wood, or other, um, to move on with the layout. My hope is that in the future I can come back and scratch build many of them to photos so that 
So I think that's what really should be there. But right. you should definitely open your eyes to, you know, open your, your mind to the possibility of some of the other structure kits available. The Magnuson kits are spectacular, still available. Um, they may be slightly warped and there may be some adjustment that has to be made with them. But I promise if you bought a whole lot of Styrid kits, you're going to have some warpage in a lot of those kits too. Not that dissimilar a problem. Um, next month, we're going to get kicked off on HydroCal. I'm really excited about starting that series. And we're going to spend several months working through uh, some structures uh, in HydroCal. They are immediately on the front of my layout. Uh, they're backed to the layout, to the aisle. The front of them is on the back side. Um, some of those are, are cut off at the fascia. So I'll be modeling interiors on the aisle. You'll get a, there'll be spots on my layout where you can look through the structure as if you were in the diner or the shoe store, uh, in my case, and out onto the road in front, uh, part of the tracks into the depot. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the HydroCal series and getting started with that structure. Uh, I hope we can work out the internet uh, things to be able to get Ray Dion uh, with Delta Deco. His product offering is spectacular. It's uh, Honestly, I don't think anything competes with HydroCal in my opinion for great detail. Um, I mean, I really do like, imagine that laser art. I've got some of those on my layout. They're spectacular structures as well. I like resin as well. Uh, you can get them. Decals in too. And decals, yeah. That's right. Yeah, he started. Randy did. He did what? His kids. Oh, really? He's including them with his kids. Yeah. Yeah, not all of them. But quite. I've got a crap. I must have a crappy connection. A little bit. Yeah. Any of you guys that have it that are, that uh, haven't been around for a while, YouTube model builders that that are used to seeing Dave, used to be around a lot more often. Hopefully, we'll get him to come back and hang out with us a little more. Uh, definitely go check out uh, his his website. Go check out Dave's decals um, and look at the the. He's got a gallery of some of the stuff he's built there. The wall sides that he's done, a lot of the with the decals, they're, they're spectacular. And there's a lot of HydroCal kits on his site to take a look at what's possible with, with that medium. Perfect. Just don't, just don't draw. Yep. Yeah, davesart.com. There you go. There you go. Dave's decals.com. Definitely go check out his. Go check out the decals. It's also, They're spectacular. It's also you can also, you can also go to devart.net, D A B A R T.net. That's the one I remember. I think that's where yeah, I went. That one. All right, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Johnny, unless we've got any questions in there, that's our hour. Hope, hopefully, I get a better connection next time. Yeah, we'll try to work all that out too. Especially if we get started on HydroCal next month. I'm really excited for, for more input on that because that's, that's definitely a unique medium. And for any of the bottlers, uh, you know, one last thing before we go, we, we've talked a lot of, uh, in the regular nightly chats about ERA and, and how to adapt structures to ERA because you know, if you're modeling the 70s, 80s, 90s, there won't be a tremendous number of wood structures uh, around from 100 years ago. Or if they are, they're in pretty rough repair. But brick, for sure, they still last in various states of, uh, uh, you know, of repair. States of yeah. repair. Disrepair. Decay, that's right, or disrepair. Uh, something I think HydroCal uh, emulates. It's hard to argue one way or the other about what's best for representing brick uh, in, its, in its new form. The one thing I can say is that 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 uh, recreating the the damage done to brick, the the stucco that's breaking away, concrete that's breaking away, damaged brick and and such, Hydrocal is really spectacular for that. So if you're modeling, uh, you know, older brick structures in the 70s, 80s, 90s, or today, doggone Hydrocal is pretty unmatched for that particular nuance. But all right, everybody, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, that's our hour. We'll see you guys back next month. We'll get kicking off the HydroCal series. And we'll spend a few months talking, working with interiors, exteriors, details. Um, 
and some construction of hydrogen. Thanks, everybody. Night, Andy. <laughs> All right. Just want to say uh, we got a show coming up next week. Uh, that's Joe's uh, train room on October the 17th. That will be uh, 8 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Yeah, of course, every Thursday we got Johnny Small Train Talk. That's at 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, just another reminder, be sure to go to davesdecals.com. Like Andy was saying, he's got some good stuff. I've caught myself spending about an hour watching, looking at his website, just trying to figure out what I would want to buy. But uh, anyway, we shall see you this coming Thursday for Johnny Small Train Talk. Y'all have a good night. We'll catch you later.